The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. I cannot wait to show you what's going on in this episode. Here is a transistor analyzer. After hooking it up and hitting test, it shows this MOSFET's pinout and VGS threshold. Isn't that awesome? Oh, right. Hi, my name is James, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. On this show, we review and talk about the tools on your electronics workbench. Now, not only does this tool identify different semiconductors and determines their pinout, it has one more pretty cool trick. It can even draw some basic parameter curves. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited. So let's go talk about the specs and stuff before doing any more measurements. Oh, and stick around because as cool as those were, there is still one more that blows me away. In a previous episode, we looked at the ESR70 from Peak Electronics. It measures a capacitor's capacitance and equivalent series resistance. The Peak Atlas DCA Pro or DCA75 is called a semiconductor analyzer and it can measure diodes, zeners, LEDs, BJTs, MOSFETs, IGBTs, JFETs, SCRs, triacs, and even voltage regulators. Because it measures so many things, I cannot cover all of the specs. Instead, let's focus on the three main things it does. It identifies components, determines their pinout, and provides basic parameter information. Actually, it does a fourth thing. With PC software, it can also do curve tracing. The unit measures 103 by 70 by 20 millimeters. The cables come with three color-coded mini grabbers permanently attached. Well, unless you desolder them. Inside is a single PCB with most of the components on one side. The entire device is powered by a single AAA or LR03 style battery, except when powered by USB. Like the other Peak tools, the DCA Pro's manual provides excellent information. For example, there are diagrams showing the test circuits used to identify components. There is free Windows software that provides all of the information from the LCD plus graphs, which I'll show later. One downside is that the software is only available for Windows. But even without the PC software, for less than 150 US dollars, I think the DCA75 is worth its price. The curve tracing is just a bonus. Well, now that I've skipped to my conclusion, let's back up and see how it works when testing some components. To make testing go faster, I connected the meter's mini grabbers to some header pins. With this setup, I can insert a part and hit test. The analyzer tells us that it is a PNP transistor and the pinout goes emitter, base, collector. Pressing the scroll button shows some basic stats like gain, the base emitter forward voltage, and the collector emitter saturation voltage. These stats are based on currents in the 5 to 10 milliamp range. If you're not familiar with some of these parts, check out the learning circuit with Karen. For just about every component I'm talking about, she has done an entire episode that explains them in more detail. Here is a special component. It is a depletion mode MOSFET. See, the analyzer agrees. Scrolling through, it shows a VGS on of 12 volts and a VGS off around negative 1.3 volts. The main difference between an enhancement mode and depletion mode MOSFET is that a depletion mode is on by default. It takes voltage to turn it off. Pretty cool, huh? For two terminal devices, any two grabbers can be used. The DCA Pro can tell the difference between a regular and Zener diode. This part appears to be a 3 volt Zener with a forward voltage of 0.7 volts. Later, I'll show that diode again when drawing parameter curves. With a single color LED connected, you'll see some flickering before seeing the forward voltage. Even cooler to watch is this two color LED. We see it has a common cathode and the forward voltage of each LED element. To me, those measurements are cool and helpful, but wait until you see the one that really blows me away. As I mentioned, the DCA75 can measure voltage regulators. 
Not only does it determine the pinout, it also determines the output voltage, the dropout voltage, and the QSN current. That's the amount of current a regulator draws when no load is attached. Just to prove connections do not matter, I am reversing the regulator and repeating the measurement. Seriously, how cool is it to hook up a linear voltage regulator and get its pin out? While playing around with this analyzer, I came across this transistor. This part is a 2N3904 NPN BJT. The analyzer detects it as a two diode junction. My guess is that the channel between the collector and emitter is blown, so the analyzer made its best guess. And now I know where this transistor belongs. It did struggle with some high voltage parts like this 600 volt 16 amp triac. I know these triacs are good because they were shipped to me from the Element 14 community brand new. The manual does mention that only SCRs and triacs with a low holding current will work. Anything needing more than 10 milliamps may not measure correctly. Obviously, if you're working with power transistors often, the DCA75 may not be a great fit for you. However, for the vast majority of semiconductors, it works brilliantly. Let's move on to the software. To demonstrate how it works, I'm using the Zener diode from before. The first tab duplicates the information from the LCD screen. Here, it is showing the component type, its Zener voltage, its forward voltage, and the pinout based on the mini grabber colors. There are also details about the measurement method. Under graphs, you'll find the types for supported components. A diode only gets a PN junction graph. I have already measured the forward bias. The graph shows that the forward voltage is around 0.7 volts. Now I'll change to reverse bias and run the test again. In this case, the analyzer measures 51 voltage points from 0 to 12 volts. And here we can see how different amounts of current through the diode will get a slightly different reverse voltage. Turns out you can download the DCA Pro software and use it without the analyzer. In the show notes, I'm going to include some graph files that I made with components shown in this episode, plus a few others, so that you can get a sense for what kind of data is available. As a standalone transistor tester, I really like being able to get pinouts, verify the component type, and have some idea whether or not a part is good all within a few seconds. I cannot tell you how many times I found an NPN in a pile of PNP transistors, or I misread the orientation of the pins on a datasheet. My number one dislike is that the mini grabbers are not replaceable. Another minor issue is that you have to remove the screws from the plastic housing to replace the battery. I also know that some of you will be bothered by the fact that the software is Windows only. But even without that, I think the tool is still a really good value. What bothers me most though is the limited current capability. The DCA Pro can only supply about 10 milliamps in any of its configurations. The positive to that limit is that it won't damage a part, but it also means you cannot fully exercise a BJT, MOSFET, or SCR. For example, the VGS graphs from the analyzer do not match the VGS graphs in the datasheet. The reason is that the analyzer cannot provide enough drain current. For more understanding, I have a write-up on MOSFET graphs and what they mean. There is a link to that post in the show notes, which are over on Element 14. Those notes include graph data for some additional components, product links to all of the parts in this episode, and a link to the analyzer itself. Overall, I think you can tell that I'm impressed and happy with the DCA Pro. While capacitors will always have a special place in my heart, being able to test things like diodes, transistors, and regulators should appeal to all of us. For me, the DCA Pro may not be a must have, but it is definitely a high one. I'd recommend at least putting it on your wish list. Hmm. I should put together a list of tools for gift ideas. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's time for me to get back to finding pinouts on my electronics workbench. Mm -hmm.